Hey everybody, it's Eric, and today I want to talk about how I create tales. Uh, of course, this is how I do them. Uh, it's not the only way, I'm sure. But I'm going to use something a lot of people don't know about called angle control for bones. So let's get started. Here's one I made earlier. And so this is a very basic tail. And I can wag it around and get a nice curve going and I would play with this a lot more to get it just right but you can see it kind of acts like a tail so let's um, let's make that happen so let me start over here start with a new document I'm just gonna get my shape tool and get a rectangle got a nice uh, monkey fur brown going right now and I'm just gonna click and draw out a rectangle and there's a tail uh, let's make it look a bit more like a tail by giving it a nice rounded end and while I'm at it I'll also get the um, the curvature tool and round those two okay so that looks a bit more like a tail than just a rectangle does uh, I will now add a bone layer and put that tail into it. Now to draw the tail bones, I'm going to use the sketch bones tool, which is new. If you don't have the sketch bones tool, you'll need to create them one at a time. So this is very useful. I'm going to click that sketch bones tool and the bone length right now is 0.2. And let's see how that looks. Because that setting is how long each bone will be when I draw it out with the sketch bone tool. I'm also going to hold down the shift key. If I don't hold down the shift key, I might not get a straight line. So I'll hold down the shift key and just draw bones straight on through. And that looks pretty good. Let me see if I can go a little bit longer. There, now that one's out. Okay. That will work. And I'll get my Manipulate Bones tool, and they all are parented automatically to one another when I do this. But you'll notice the tail isn't bending, and that's because the tail is a vector object. And there are no points along the line for it to bend at. So let's start by just getting the Add Points tool. And these are already there. so. But at all the joints, I'm going to put a point above and below. And you can see I'm, a, I'm a, on the line when that little red circle appears under my cursor. So I want to see that so I'm not just clicking a free-floating point. I want to make sure it actually is on the line. So I'm just going to do one at each and every joint. That's all of them. Let me just go ahead and select all these and I'll get my curvature point and make sure that they're curved. That base one I didn't really need to do, but I've done it, so it doesn't matter. So now if I go to bone layer, I get my manipulate bones tool. See if I try and move the first one in the chain, it doesn't do anything. It just wants to move it around. That's because it's the base, but if I do the others, I'm getting some bends. Now this is kind of hard to work with. There's so many bones. So let's use that angle control. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit escape so no bones are selected. That way nothing gets parented because I am going to create a new bone right here at the base. I'm going to go ahead and set its bone strength to zero so it has no influence over that tail. You also notice the bone strength came out really pretty good for this tail. You might need to adjust it depending on yours. Uh, but for me, I don't see any need to adjust it at all. And I will just uh, select that previous base bone and I'll parent it to this new bone. Zoom out a bit more. Get my manipulate bones tool. And you see now I can rotate that and get a better feel. And I'm getting a rotation at every joint. Let's test that. Yep. Now you see when the shape overlaps itself, you get a bit of a hole. We'll fix that later. 
That's what happens when a single shape overlaps itself. You get this negative space. So let's uh, fix that later though. First thing I need to do is look at my bone names. Now when I drew them out, they drew out in order. So the last bone is B11. So the one before it's going to be B10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the names are up here in the top bar. If you um, aren't sure of the name of the bone you've currently got selected. So I'm going to just select this very last bone. That's B11. I'm going to go to bone constraints and right here, three quarters of the way down, you see angle control bone and nothing. It's set to none. I am going to set it to the bone right in front of it. This is 11. So I'm going to set the angle control bone to be 10. And I'm going to leave the control amount at one, which means it gets rotated as much as the one before it does, as the one that's controlling it does. I'll close that. And let me zoom in a bit so you can see this. I will get my Manipulate Bones tool again. And you can see that that final bone is also rotating as I rotate its controller. And I can select that, go back to bone constraints, and say, let me make it really obvious. I'll set it to three, so it's tripling it. So now when I click that one, you see how much more that's already bending than the one I'm controlling? And you can also set that to, say, 0.5. So it's bending, but only half as much. So it's a bit harder to see, but it is angling half as much as the one ahead of it. So let's do the whole chain, because that will make the tail much easier to manipulate. So let me go back to this last bone. I'll go into bone constraints. I'll set that back to one. And I don't even need to close this window now. So I'll choose 11 or 10, I'm sorry, I'll choose 10, there's B10, and I'll go to angle control bone, and I'll set that to 9 for that, then I'll go to 9, and I'll set it to 8, this will get boring, so 8 to 7, <laughs> make sure you are choosing angle control bones and not these very similar looking ones above and below it, 7 to 6, Six to five, five to four. Just be careful as you do this to make sure you're using the right uh, settings. Four to three, three to two, and two to one. And I'm not gonna set uh, one to anything because that's my base control bone. And when you set a bone to have an angle control, you take away your ability to use Manipulate or Translate Bone Tool to affect that bone. Right now, if I try and move any of these, they don't move because they are being told only move if the one that's controlling you moves. So I will go ahead and grab that. And there we go. Everything's got a nice puppy dog wag angle. Let me zoom out so you can really see that. There we go. And there's our little crossover problem again. When I overlap the shape with itself, this is a common problem. It creates negative space. So let's fix that. Go back to the tail. I'm going to turn this into multiple shapes. So halfway along is right about here. Oops, wrong tool. Right about there. So I'm going to get my Create Shape tool. Let's move that over so I can see it all. I'm going to just lasso all the way around those that won't work. <laughs> I need to get my Add Point tool. I'm going to put it right over this point. You can When it's over a line and red, it means it's going to add a point. When it's over a point, you see it turns green. 
and that's saying I'm going to actually be adding something that's attached to that point that was green. I'm going to come down over this one, see it's green again, and I'll let go. That has now put a line that connects the top and the bottom. I will then go and select all that. There's my checkerbone board that is showing me that I can use this create shape button up here. And what it does, hit escape, is it will control it will create a line right there. So I'm going to get my hide edge tool. Do not go to draw and get delete edge that deletes it and will break the shape. Get the hide edge under fill and click on that. Now it's gone away. Can't see it. And let's have a look now again at the curve. See now that little break isn't happening as it overlaps itself. Now since it's one to one, when it circles around, it creates a perfect circle. So you would want to play around with what looks best for your character by changing the amount of uh, rotation in the angle control to probably a little less for each successive tailpiece. But that's just a matter of playing. Now right now, though, we're not getting a tail that might do what a cat's does, which is kind of come into an S curve or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the middle bone here. This one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go ahead and choose that one there, somewhere around the middle. That's B6. I'll go into bone constraints and turn off any angle control on that. And that's all I need to do. So now I've got two bones that are that I can manipulate in this tail. And this base one will control everything up until it hits this bone here that's not angle controlled. That's B6. But it allows me to you know, turn that one that way and then turn that one that way. And I get that level of control. So, you know, you might want to do more. Let's bring that around. There we go. So I have a tail. And there's that such a circle there. So let's take a look. Let me go ahead and fix that a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'll select the next one in the line. And I'll go into bone constraints. And I'll say change that to 0.9. And maybe set this one to 0.9 as well. And then I'll bring this one to 0.8. And maybe this one to 0.7 and maybe I'll leave that one at 0.7 as well. You'll just need to play around to see what works best for you. So now I'm getting that but it's also kind of breaking the clean curve there. It's pinching in a little bit. So like I said you'll want to you know play and see what works best for you But now it's not when it rotates, it will cross itself rather than making a perfect circle. And you could also do something like this for hair strands or any other thing that your imagination might come up with that could use these angle control bones. And that is how I create a tail.